So sleep hygiene is all about setting yourself up for success or dealing with some of these more minor problems. Right. So I was wondering if you had any tips on some more advanced type of sleep hygiene. <laughs> but like, are there any other sort of more advanced sleep hygiene techniques like, oh, maybe your resting heart rate or respiratory rate or something like that? Like people could. Some unconventional, the stuff, This you know, if you Googled, if you Google sleep hygiene, what's some stuff that might not come up on those initial lists that, are, that would still be useful? One of them, one of the things that you'll see often on sleep hygiene lists is keep a regular schedule. Because predictability, the brain loves predictability. So if you keep a regular schedule, time itself becomes a cue. But what if you can't keep a regular schedule? Well, an alternative approach I would take is find other ways of building predictability into your sleep. Well, I usually say, okay, stop trying to keep a regular schedule, but, but find other ways to build predictability in. So maybe have a nighttime routine that is highly predictable where you do the same things in the same order, even if you do them in different places in a different hotel room or whatever, especially if you can bring things with you, like bring the pillowcase with you. Uh, as a, as a condition stimulus, who's do the same things in the same order. So even if they're at a different time in a different place, find alternate ways to build predictability. If time itself is not the predictable one. Um, another one is avoiding bright light at night. What if you can't, um, so blue blocking glasses are great for this because, and by blue blocking glasses, they have to be orange or red most of the times. So if you put on say orange tinted glasses and you can't see the color blue, then the environmental light is not going to interfere with your sleep in the same way, because it's not going to send a daytime signal. Another one that even fewer people know about is bright light in the morning can help set your sleep up at night in three ways that are, that are actually a little unconventional. Number one, by having that morning be a regular timing and a strong daytime signal, I'm talking about daylight. I'm talking about like outdoor light, not just turn on a light, my bedroom light. That's a couple hundred lux step outside. It's thousands of lux of light. Getting that strong daytime signal in the morning at a predictable time starts a clock. But if you have a strong morning signal with some bright light at a predictable time, about 16 to 17 hours later, your body will expect to be ready for sleep. So like by setting that time, it creates, it sets you up for success by starting that timer. 